Hey. This knife is the Benchmade Bushcrafter 162. It says the steel is CPM S30V. And I've heard some people say this is one of those powdered super seals. Tells you about their warranties and knife care. My first impression just looking at this is it is tiny i expected this to be substantially larger than this i don't know why i did but i just did this is like a small martini or mora knife but it says bench made there and uh this leather is supposed to be made out of buckskin. And it feels soft, almost suede-like ever so slightly. You can see like suede, you can get that, uh, get the nap to move on it a little bit. It has a decent sized belt loop on it, but it also has the D-ring, which you can connect a dangle or two if you want to wear it uh, like lower on your hip. This is one of those straps that you got to be careful when you draw the knife so that you don't slice the slice the strap there. Let's take a look at that real quick. This side says Benchman. Got the little butterfly emblem. It says 162. And then this side says Siebert and it says S30V Steel. I think his name was Shane Siebert, this is the guy who designed this. I've heard from other videos I've watched. I don't know a lot more than that about him, but the next impression I got was, uh, I thought the knife handles, the G10, was going to be a little darker green than this. Or maybe like a little more green. This, I don't know, it's green, but it, it's an odd shade of green. And it looks like the color's really faded up here near the pinch. Which you can see there, see those little cutouts? That's what I'm calling the pinch there, like you can pinch up on it. I don't know, maybe for carving or skinning, probably. You might want to use that. Maybe put your thumb and finger there, go like that. I heard it has titanium pins, and even the uh, lanyard hole is a titanium pin. You can see through, they go the whole way through, and they're pressure fitted. So I guess it locks these uh, G10 scales on really tightly and then you get the red liner liners in there which look really cool it's a it looks like a fairly thick piece of steel Let me see if i can zoom in on it there it's a pretty good looking tip nice and straight definitely has a 90 degree spine this side feels even sharper than this other side. But it's got a little finger guard there. And it's got a little little swell out here at the uh, butt cap area. And the edges are nice and rounded. It doesn't it doesn't feel like it's poking me in my hand anywhere. Feels pretty good in my hand. Yeah, the only thing I can say about it so far is I'm just a little shocked at how small it is. I mean, it is just a bushcraft knife. That's what it's being marketed as. Looks like it's got a slight curve to the whole piece of stock steel there. And then uh, drop point blade. To me, that looks like a saber grind. And it has a secondary bevel on it there nothing will focus today there you go and the reason I picked this up 
is because I've heard only good about this steel, this CPM S30V. Supposedly that it will, even though it's a stainless steel, it will hold an edge like nobody's business and you practically just have to strop it to get it back to uh, hair popping sharp. That seems to be the consensus about this blade. So, I was like, that sounds pretty good. I do like a knife that I don't have to sharpen too often. And it seems like as I get older, I've become more and more fond of stainless steel. And I hear that this is a really great stainless steel, so I was like, I'll give it a try. It's kind of a partial mirror finish, but it's more of a satin finish, as you can see. But you can see some reflections in it. And as far as the thickness, that's over an eighth, but it's not a quarter. I'd say it's about three sixteenths, which is a decent thickness for a bushcraft blade. It feels like the uh, the balance point's right there where it swells out. Right at that first pin, which isn't too bad. It feels more, like, slightly more handle heavy than front heavy. Uh, let me see, what else can I say? Oh, check out that, like, kind of like Coke bottle uh palm swell on it that is pretty unique i like that and it's got a little tiny choil there for sharpening okay here it is i polished it up a little bit you can see that steel is pretty nice looking even the g10 looks a little better got some of that white fading off I can get that lights reflect there pretty good. But yeah, it's it's a really good looking little little knife. It's just a lot smaller than I, I thought it was gonna be, like I said, how many times now? <laughs> but for a small little bushcraft knife, I mean I guess that's fine. I kinda wish for the money that it would have come with the dangler. I think it's a, a kind of a dirty shame that you have to buy that separate because this knife is not very cheap. It does have a plastic uh, insert down inside of the sheath. And let me see. Well, you can see the little thin leather uh, wedge there. Very small, no drain hole it doesn't look like. The leather wilting, that's what I was trying to think of. It's very, very thin. It looks like it's just another piece of this leather, which isn't super thick. It's not super thin, it's just a softer, kind of suede deer skin. But it does have a, uh, it looks like a fairly sizable ferro rod holder. And it looks like it's stitched pretty good. You're looking at about a four and a quarter inch sharpened edge. Maybe a little less. About four, four and an eighth, four and a quarter for the blade. And just a hair over nine inches overall. And the handle is about five inches. The width of it, close to an inch wide, see that, might even be just a hair over an inch wide, but it's close at the handle right here, at the swell, and just over an eighth, yep, probably about three sixteenths, yeah, it's definitely not a quarter. It's close, not quite. Okay, here it is, out of the package. Got a sheet of printer paper here. All I've done is just polished it up. But let's see how sharp it arrived. Sharp.
Yeah, it's not bad for how thick it is, especially. Yeah, you can get those curved cuts. It's not as shockingly sharp as I thought it would be. And that could be due to just how thick it is. But it definitely is paper cutting sharp. Let's see if it can shave hair at all. Yeah, I got some hairs on there. You can see that. It's definitely not blowing my mind for how sharp it is. Yep, I just lightly, lightly stropped this on a leather belt and it's already noticeably sharper. Okay, here it is. I put a uh, shock cord on it. And I also added a ferro rod here with a little piece of shock cord as a retention strap. But I don't think I need it. It stays in there pretty tight. But if this thins out over time with use, I'll have that there. So all I do is push that in and then just stretch the shock cord over. That's it, that simple. It's pretty much raving reviews about this, this blade. So hopefully I think it's worth it. I noticed the micarta, you can wax this up or oil it, polish it up, and it looks as good as new. But then when you start putting it in the sheath, it dry it looks dried up like scuffed almost like when it comes out again so must just be and i've noticed other people's online look the same way so it must just be the micarta or the g10 i mean just a dot of wax or oil on it and it looks new again like some of that there got a little bit of it and try to get it to focus so you can see it before and after Okay, there it is. Looks as good as new. I just took a cloth and wiped off that little dot of wax. And it, it seems like just a micro residue remains on there, but it keeps it not so much shiny, but it just gets rid of that dry kind of scuffed look. Okay, mine goes back in the sheath really easy, and it's real easy to snap it. I don't have to like stretch the leather extra hard or anything. It snaps real easy, but it's nice and secure. It ain't going nowhere. It's in there quite well. I think if you wore this on your belt, it would be about that much knife sticking up past your belt, which is bound to poke into your side. So I know I ain't gonna like that. That's why I'll probably get an attachment a dangler for it so what i'm hoping is that this edge on it holds up for a really really long time without needing uh too much sharpening hopefully just strop it back to sharp for a while i mean it's not that big of a deal i have some pretty serious knife sharpening systems but i just want to see how good this cpm s30v steel really is but we'll do a size comparison real quick. All right, here it is beside a Mora. And here it is beside a Hudson Bay. Here it is beside a Glock 78. The old knife. Uh, I'm looking forward to give it a try considering it's like a saber grind. It's not really designed like a typical bushcraft knife. But I've heard some people say even though it's marketed as a bushcraft knife, it should be marketed as a survival kind of jack-of-all-trades type knife so we'll see but, but you see the texture on that g10 there too pretty good this is actually my first bench-made knife that i've ever owned okay there it is for this unboxing i don't know how much more i could say about it this is joe doomsday signing out
Don't you know that I love you? In a god of a Vita, baby Don't you know that I'll always be true? Oh, <laughs> 